In this video, we're going to look at my favorite wireless headset for PS4. Let's get into it. All right, so in this video, we're going to look at what I believe could be the best bang for the buck wireless headset for PS4 or PlayStation 4. Now, there are a handful of reasons why I think this is worth making a video on, and price is being one of them. This headset has an MSRP of 149 US dollars, but Amazon has it on sale pretty much all the time. You can, for the most part, find it right around $100. I was able to pick it up for 100 euros. Keep in mind, I am currently located in Sweden, so usually, I'm buying from Germany since we Swedes are still lacking a proper Amazon store here in Scandinavia. Anyway, the point is, regardless where you're at, Amazon has the Arctic 7 on sale pretty much all the time. Also, this is very important. If you decide to pick this up, make sure to pick up the Arctic 7 2019 edition as SteelSeries has done some important updates this year that makes this headset even greater. We're gonna talk about these changes in just a moment, but for now on, let's look at the setup and installation and how you get started. Well, the installation itself is very simple. All you do is you plug in the USB transmitter into any of the various uh, USB ports on the PS4. You got a total of three in total. I'm just gonna use one of the two in the front and once you plug it in, your audio source will automatically switch over to the headset itself. Now I can just switch back to Spider-Man and the audio is now being played through the headset which is very nice and as you can see there is no cords here now once you wanna let's say you wanna disconnect the device all you do is you simply unplug it uh, and you will get a pop notification saying that the headset is now being inactivated basically and as you can hear the sound source has now been changed back to the screen again and that's basically how it's done in terms of sound let's look at the full specification so we're looking at an over ear closed back headset and what this means is that unlike many you know hi-fi headphones that usually look a bit similar to these ones from biodynamic as you can see they have an open grill on each each side of the ear cup letting air through which makes these open end still series went the other way around with a closed ear cup closed back enclosure usually has less sound leakage which is typically preferable for gaming where you want minimal leakage which will help isolate the sound in crowded areas in terms of specs we're getting dual 40 millimeter drivers with an impedance of 32 ohms and a frequency response of 20 to 20 kilohertz and so as far as specs goes for these speakers this is typically the numbers you find on most headsets in this price range however that doesn't mean that they sound like most gaming headsets in this price range because they actually sound a lot better than most other options in this category here's a rant though i feel like we must talk about this this headset's got support for virtual surround as well however this is done on a software level and therefore it only works on pc so you cannot use this on ps4 but trust me after i've been using them for a couple of weeks uh, probably a couple of months by now on several platforms including PC I can assure you that the virtual surround doesn't do anything it is as worthless and pointless as HDR 400 is and honestly I think it's time to put the foot down and finally start speaking out about this virtual surround is a joke please every brand out there stop implementing it and please don't market it as heavily as you do it is nothing more than just the post processing method that doesn't do jack shit so basically Basically, it's virtually trying to create a set of extra sound sources, but in reality, they doesn't exist. This is a stereo headset that is marketed as a surround headset, which is misleading as fudge. It actually makes the sound worse. Anyway, that is the end of this rant. I just feel like I needed to address it. In terms of mic and microphone, well, it actually isn't that bad. It's got a frequency response of 100 to 10k or 10 kilohertz. It's bi-directional and it's got some form of noise cancellation it's also got a mute button and it's retractable and we're going to listen to it in just a second in terms of wireless technology it uses 2.4 gigahertz radio lossless with a max range of 12 meters or around 40 feet now, i got a 54 square meter apartment and i can stand in the opposite end of my kitchen which is about 10 meters away from the transmitter and it still works fine now if i would try to walk even further it would start to make weird sounds to the point where you cannot hear 
hear what you're listening to any longer, so I would say 10 meters with a few walls in between shouldn't be any problem for the most part. Now keep in mind if you're living in a larger town where there is a lot of wireless connections there could potentially be bigger problems but so far I haven't encountered any issues so I live in the center of a fairly populated city and so most likely you won't have any issues either and this is worth talking about because this is where wireless can be a hassle but thankfully these have never let me down. Now my other biggest worrying going into this was the battery life right especially for gaming it needs to be good otherwise what is the point right if you need to spend a lot of time recharging the batteries why would you even bother with a wireless headset right you could just pick up a corded headset and be done with it luckily steel series have fitted the rt7 with a battery with use enough to last up to 24 hours of continuous use well that's according to steel series at least in reality however i say they aren't that off actually i was able to make it last for about 25 hours so in terms of battery life it's actually pretty good now it should be mentioned that the battery is built into the air cups so you are unable to change it out if you wanted to in opposite to arctis pro for example but to be fair arctis pro wireless is almost 100 dollars more so you cannot really compare them now speaking of charging it takes about three and a half hours to get them back to 100 percent again once the headset is out of battery or is running low you can simply plug in the included usb cable into any of the available usb ports on the ps4 and keep the headset running and so even if you're running low you don't have to quit playing just plug in the cord and keep going the headset will start blinking once it starts running low and there is a neat battery saving feature that will automatically disconnect the headset if there is no audio being played after x amount of minutes this value can be set inside the steel series engine and because steel series doesn't have an app for ps4 directly this is something that you're gonna need a pc for if you wanted to fine tune it that all being said by default the headset will disconnect after 30 minutes of an activity there's a few things here regarding the microphone that we need to talk about for one it is retractable it is not detachable so you can't pull it off completely and get rid of it but you can uh, pull it back like this and it will hide uh, inside the ear cup like this but this is as far as you can push it steel series also launched a brand new headset based on the Arctis lineup it's got the same speakers the same type of microphone but instead of the sort of ski goggle headband it's got another type of design but in terms of speakers and microphone it's the same hardware i gotta mention also i haven't tried this headset yet so i can't speak too much about it but this is obviously an option as you can hear it is not the best microphone out there but it definitely serves the purpose for what the headset cost it's actually one of the better microphones i've tested in this price range in terms of build quality well on a rating between 0 and 10 i would probably give it 6 or perhaps 7 at most i would say that it would probably most likely hold up against the few accidents and a few drops but yeah that's about it the jokes as well as the ear cups are made of plastic and if you twist and apply a bit of force on the ear cups you can clearly hear small squeaks and cracks developing inside the ear cups it is far from terrible but both HyperX Cloud 2 as well as Logitech Pro X feels a lot more durable thanks to better build quality the headband is however made of metal which is nice to see and this is by far where the headsets and headphones typically break now let's talk about the comfort this is where they shine to me at least I cannot stop noticing how nicely they sit on my head compared to many other gaming headset i've tried in the past to me these are miles ahead of the competition in terms of comfort and that is one of the most important factors when it comes to picking up a headset in my opinion i can see why some people find them to be too hot especially if you live in the areas where air conditioning is a standard here in scandinavia i've been using these this whole summer without ever being concerned about them getting too hot so i guess this issue is all based on location so what is the difference between the original arctic 7 and the 20 19 edition so the headband has been redesigned based on the arctis pro to provide a more curved look and better fit for all head sizes the comfort is also enhanced with thicker ear cushions and all arctis 7 now includes dts headphone x 2.0 and the latest sound technology from dts keep in mind though this is trash don't even think about it in the end what it comes down to is the following now when you combine the whole experience of this headset considering the price you 
pay. This is a no-brainer in my opinion. If you don't want to empty your bank account, but you don't want to compromise on the audio, this is the sweet spot. That all said, Orcti 7 definitely has its shortcomings. It's not the best looking headset in my opinion. There is also a bit too much plastic, but it doesn't matter. It also feels a bit cheap. Also, the chat mix and surround sound are not available on the PS4 and does only work on PC. But other than that, I think this is a home run. It got good audio reproduction, pretty okay microphone performance, versatile and comfortable design, as well as a solid software support and many customization options. Although keep in mind this only works on PC. In the end, the pros, trumps, the cons, and all in all, this is a brilliant headset that works fantastic on PS4 wirelessly. Now, if you want to take your experience over to PC, yeah, that won't be an issue either. For Xbox, however, they doesn't work wirelessly, and you are forced of using the included 3.5 millimeter audio jack instead and that is something to be aware of for more in-depth details you find the links down below now in case you have any questions guys regarding the wireless resolution the wireless resolution the wireless solution or how the headset works feel free to drop all the comments down below i'm gonna do my best to help you guys out in the best way i can in the meantime watch either of these two videos for more awesome content and i want to thank you guys so much for sticking around this long thank you so much once again I'm happy to see you guys in the next video